Welcome to 18 Game Design and Development videos for the first coursework at the University of Southampton. My name is Tom Blau. I'm a lecturer on the course. I'm here with Callum Sporpal and Max. Excellent. So uh, Max, would you tell us a little bit about what we asked the students to do for this coursework? Um, so the students were asked to create a small game prototype which uh, introduces a core dynamic and then is supported by some mechanics which are tutorialised and presented to the player in a way where they can learn them. Okay, fantastic. Let's uh, let's start with our first video, or our first game rather. So our first game is Slingshot. Right. Let's sling some shots. Oh no, I have played this one. You uh, do this one. Yeah. You... Sorry, I just like yeah. You you do this one, and then we'll just we'll round it for the next. <laughs> so here's the tutorial. Can I just say, funky music? Funky music, yes. Funky yeah. music, which I'm going to turn down slightly just so it doesn't drown us out. But yeah, a nice audio backing, and it sort of fits the aesthetic they've gone. I like this. That's a very cool way of introducing the controls, so they sort of fade yeah. in and out as you go past them. So I will point out the timer in the top left. Place. No, don't point that out. I was, hope I, I was leaving that to be a surprise. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, so, hang on, was that a shift? Yeah, that was a shift. Shift yeah. to spring. Okay, and then you can double jump from the looks of things to get up there. And again, they make you prove that you can do it by... Oh. Uh, Interesting. They have. Ha. So you found the, the one of the upcoming mechanics, which is the grapple. Which so I maybe wonder if they should have disabled that before I, until yeah, you reach that element. Of the they should have. Especially since it's difficult to get out of once you're in it. So now you've got to sort of do a double jump at going down, which is kind of an unusual, unusual trick that platforms get you to do. Mm. Uh, okay, so now we are stuck in here. We can get out of that thing, so you can actually jump through that. I think. Yep. You but yeah, don't don't click. Just double jump to yeah. see that green. Oh, green okay. Right. So yeah, that that bit again not hugely obvious. I don't know why it's a a separate sort of green platform. Whoa. Maybe you could have just oh. left that as a hole. So. so I think one thing I do like the way the tutorial elements fade in and out, but I think perhaps that radius could be a little bit larger. Yeah. Just to make sure that you can see the WS and the right click at the, there at the same go. time. So that timer ran out. So the tutorial is timed, and if you don't get through it, you lose. Which I feel it's a bit unforgiving, right? It's it, not. It is. It doesn't give you a chance to play around and experience the mechanics as you would expect the tutorial to let you do. Yeah, and as it's, you know, if it's the first, um, I mean, I was going to say if it's the first time you're playing a game with a grappling mechanic, there's not a huge amount of them out there. So it's the sort of thing that you want to get your player familiar Absolutely. with, like in a setting what? where they don't have to do, do the whole tutorial. To hang, on, hang on, why did you just let go now, Max? And fall off the level. Okay, so, okay so just just respawn you at the start of the level. That's good. Uh, yeah, the grapple stays intact, which is a minor bug. Yeah, it's, it's certainly not game breaking. So, so, I, so I, where are you supposed to go? Up here. So let's talk about presentation while Max figures out the uh, tutorial. So the aesthetic is quite nice. It's you know very consistent. It's got a sort of neon-y, cyberpunky aesthetic. The music fits it quite well. So I am. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of cyberpunk, and I do like the fact that the audio and the visuals here definitely combining nicely to, to get that theme across. Yeah, I, I think there's maybe a little bit more you could do with the audio, so you could have, you know, sort of like a, a noise for when you shoot out that grapple hook, and especially when it connects with something as well. And definitely. Like, or maybe the jump or something like that. But otherwise, what's there is quite nice. Oh, there you go, you've made it. Oh, nearly five seconds left. Can you do it? Oh, One you second want. to go. <laughs> So yeah, that timer is going to become... Oh, you're skipping the rest of the tutorial. Maybe. Straight for the trial, okay. Alright. Um, we can come back to the tutorial later anyway. But in terms of information design, it's not immediately obvious where the goal of the level is, right? So here, where are we supposed to go? Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to go to the top? Are we supposed to go to the right? Are we supposed to go to the top right or the bottom right? Because I think those purple... Again, so what are these purple lines? Do they kill you? Are they... Yeah. So I, they yes, do they kill do. you. Uh, I think in the tutorial it is not tutorialized, but it is incorporated as part of the level. It, so it is, but my point is, if that yeah. is the case, if you look at the bottom right, I'm assuming that's where the goal is, but if we uh, if we want to get to, like, can we just run through that gap there at the top, or do we have to try and swing above that purple line and sort yeah. of get out to the level that way? And, and also, let's note, this is also fairly unforgiving as, a, as an opening level. Yeah. I mean, Even... you could argue that if the tutorial is integrated into, like, if we consider the tutorial as level one, and mm. this is level two, then it's not terrible. And it is giving us the choice of, well, hang on, I was going to say, 
but looking at it, I was going to say it's giving us the choice of taking the slower route up to the left, but then it's not because that's blocked off. So what what's the point of that? Then? Yeah. So they do use this. Uh, well, spoilers, but they do use this to a better effect later in the game. But in this level, it certainly is an interesting choice. Oh, let's, let's hope we can get to that. Though. Yes. Um, but yeah, so oh, there we go. Nice. generally, I think the timer as well could do with being quite a lot bigger and a lot more evident if they do want to use that in the game. Oh. Um, it's certainly a bit of the information design that, especially since it blends in with the background quite a lot, it's very easy to overlook, especially as it ticks down to the last sort of 10 seconds. Even again, so just again, like another audio cue, where it's exactly just... sort of classic like Quake announcer voice or something. Your time is running out. Or even just you know like a sort of beep 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 when it gets the yeah. last ten seconds or something like that. Um, and you can even use that to control the tension, for example, which would be quite nice. Yeah, so some games uh, do that where just the music itself will get more intense and faster. Yeah. So um, just hold the name a bit. Uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer does that really really well. Mm. So here's what here's an example of them using the level level design to. Where you, have the choices, where you go. But yeah, so so overall, what do you think for presentation? Uh, overall, I think the presentation is pretty good. There's um, so we've already spoken about like the consistency of the graphics and the audio. Like mm -hmm. there, there could be a, like a little more to the audio to sort of really highlight some of those things. Ah, tutorial best time for. Okay, so I think did you run out of time there as well? I don't know because you've got some best times on the top right there. So again, some information design sort of hinting at what the dynamic they're going for is. Yeah, although I didn't finish the tutorial. So. Well, it says we've got a best time. Yeah, so I'm not That's sure what's going on there. Yeah. That might just be sort of debugging information or something. Yeah, so a good would be key information is shown clearly, graphics are consistent, appropriate use of audio effects and or music. Um, so the key information is certainly shown, or to an extent. So the... I think the... I think this is probably borderline... Like borderline or satisfactory, to be honest. I think the goal is not super clear. The timer is there, but it's not... Like you say, it could be better highlighted. It does blend in with the background. And certainly what the first time we were playing through the tutorial in the expo, and when Max was playing it just now, wasn't really aware that there was a timer there at all. And it's very easy to sort of just get halfway through and then fail for mm -hmm. apparently no reason. So I, I think I'd probably say it's borderline satisfactory good, personally. Um, because I think they've done a very nice job of making it consistently... The graphics consistent, the effects are, and music work well, and, you know, things like the... Uh, the hazards, so the lasers, are clearly signposted. But again, it could just be better with those end-of-the-level uh, goals. That's something. We found some, another... Yeah, we found and, a small bug there. And the timer as well. Yeah, okay, so... Mm. Max, how do you feel about that? Um, the timer... Uh, if you spend ages trying to get through that first screen, and then you immediately run out of the timer, that's just quite frustrating, I think. Maybe per level screen? Would be nice. Okay, yeah. so that's all. That's sort of drifting into gameplay, but yeah. we'll cover that in a sec. So if we say between satisfactory and good for presentation, I think so. I think so. Uh, okay, but yes. So the timer itself as a mechanic. So I know why they've done that, and we'll cover this a bit more when we sort of talk about the core dynamic. There, there were sort of two ways they could have taken the direction of this game. Either sort of you know as a sort of slow puzzler where the point is just to get from one side to the other, mm -hmm. or as a sort of really fast paced racer where you have to you know race to the end, get there within the time. Frame. And it feels like the level design wants to do one and the mechanics want to do another. It, it feels like they've definitely got a bit of internal conflict between those two. So, the le like you say, the level design definitely is emphasizing that precision aspect. But, so I think if you, if you want to do a game like this, but you're wanting to race to the end, you want a level design that encourages fast moving, right? So I will say that aspect of it is really nice. The way they've got the grapple to like bend around platforms and stuff, that is really difficult to do. And the way they've done it is really good. So I would say, so let's have a look at um, our gameplay thing. So if, if they wanted to hit good, they would need a set of complementary mechanics, smooth and usable controls, and meaningful play. So I think that they've got the jump and the double jump and the grapple, and I think the they play quite nicely off one another. I must say, if I, if I had to, um, if I were a betting man, I would say they spent a long time on that grapple mechanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, there you go, there's your best time. So I think when I did the tutorial, I filled that one, and when I completed that one, I filled that one. I think you're right, but that's a tiny issue, really. So, how are the controls? Um, they're quite good once you get the hang of them. Um, the grapple's a bit buggy, but it's quite complicated as well. So, like, I feel this. So, do you reckon? So, would you say, uh, in terms of gameplay, good or somewhere between satisfactory and good? 
I'd say it's, it's good, taking into consideration the bugs. So if, you know, if the bugs are ironed out, then, then it's good. So one thing we've not talked about is meaningful play. Uh, true. So I mean, uh, so in terms of sort of platform, you have the classical meaningful play of it being sort of skill based. So sort of yep. knowing where to throw your grapple, where to swing, where to like release it, and where to make the jumps and things like that. And it certainly looks like it's got those elements. I mean, uh, so meaningful I... play isn't necessarily about. Ooh, Ooh. Okay. So they were saying if you die while you're grappling with something, your grapple will remain, and you get some weird little glitches like that. So, I think they've done a decent enough job with the level design as well. To and we'll get we'll get there. We're still on gameplay. Right? Well, I'm, I'm, so I was thinking, you, you're right. No, just in terms of how it emphasizes the mechanics for me to play. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Um, but yeah, you say good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Bugs. Um, so we've noticed a couple. Only one of them is sort of sort of broken up lately. Um, otherwise, they're mostly sort of slight. Slight um, glitches and anomalies. So, but there is a lot of complexity going on, particularly with like that sort of grapple mechanic that they've introduced. Um, yes. That was the that was. Um, so, if we say uh, some infrequent serious bugs and/or frequent minor bugs, that would be satisfactory. Or would we want to push it somewhere to a good and say there's, there are only minor bugs and these run can't. On the one hand, the complexity is certainly there making it likely you're going to have these bugs but there are definitely you know that there has been that one case with block progress and the, the grapple getting stuck does happen fairly commonly yeah so maybe borderline yeah i think it's probably borderline between those two all right let's uh, let's have a look at the briefing yeah let's in particular look at the level design for this one so Actually, I, t I tell you what, I'm going to do something slightly slightly anomalous. I'm going to say let's actually jump to the core dynamic because I think that's going to impact what we say about the level design quite a lot. So, okay. So they have said that their game has a race to the finish core dynamic, um, primarily emphasized by the timer that they have in the trials. Um, and their score for the level is based on how far that timer gets down. Uh, the further it gets down, obviously the less points they get on the level. So I think that is that's an absolutely classic core dynamic, right? It's all about sort of sprinting, sprinting through the level to the end, making the best use of the space available to get there as fast as you possibly can. So look at your, you know, your Sonic or whatever. That's your classic example of that type of game. Mm -hmm. uh, and based on purely the mechanics they've got, they all lead into it quite well. You've got the double jump. You've got the sort of ooh, oh yes, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, You've got the the grapple, the, the like the swing is very fluid. It's like you really get a sense of momentum from it. I think it's really hindered by the level design, though. Mm. Like in some cases, I think so. For here, for example, you're sort of doing a lot of. Also, I don't know why there's that section where it sort of blocks you off. But elements here where you're sort of having to wait for these um, these traps to sort of go and sort of. Ooh. Yeah, it certainly it, do, it, it forces you to slow down, lose your momentum, and I think what they really could have done with is more sort of like a free flowing sort of feeling through the level. So you, you know, a sort of set of platforms that they're encouraged to sort of sprint across, swing, 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 mm -hmm. like, yeah. rather than sort of this backtracking and stuff here. Traps that you could easily avoid rather than having to wait for. Yeah. So they have said that they're, they've explicitly made the choice that the rope should carry momentum to encourage players to get better times and give it a faster feel to the game. Uh, it's said the same for the uh, dance music as well. They specifically chose a fast-paced sort of soundtrack yeah. so in order nice to encourage that feel. That, yeah. um, and again, the sort of the timer as well obviously is sort of adding that mm -hmm. pressure and it's encouraging the player and it's really reinforcing that dynamic. So in that case, it's good. So um, just looking at the core dynamic, um, if we say good, that would be a clear core dynamic. It suits the theme of the game. Is well supported by primary mechanics and mostly appropriate audio visual choices. In fact, I think it might even be pushing X. I, I agree. I think certainly they've considered how their audio visual choices have impacted that feel of the game, and everything does work in service of that, save for the level design, which obviously is marked under its own criteria. So, so yeah, I, I, so I think for that, I think we say this is uh, an excellent example. Hmm. Um, so now, with that in mind, let's go and have a look at the level design. Um, so it does. It certainly demonstrates all of the available mechanics. You need to. You need to. Uh, do you actually need to double jump much? 
Um, you... other, other than that point in the tutorial. I suppose right. it, it does certainly make life easier in some of these. I problems. think you can also do that problem by double jumping, well. Wow. Yeah. So I think actually, um... So I feel like you don't necessarily need the double jump and the grapple to get through some of these levels. But it does give the player the choice of how they want to solve their problems. Yeah, true. And mm -hmm. you, you, you're stacking them. Yeah, so I have to wait for the timer to get out. Okay, so uh, in terms of that, it's good. In terms of, again, I still think it works against the core dynamic a little bit. I agree. Yeah. Um, so let's have a look at the criteria again. So good would be sensible level design, demonstrates a number of mechanics, good pacings, and clear goals risk rewards. So that's something we didn't uh, talk about, the pacing of the level. Mm -hmm. So it starts off nice and easy in the tutorial, let's just jump over this obstacle, swing to this platform. It feels like it very quickly ramps up, though now mm -hmm. that you've played it a few times, you are getting through these levels like relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, how have you felt sort of the pacing and the difficulty there? Um, I think the difficulty is just, it feels like it's not, it's kind of a bug, and once you get used to it, right. you can then, you know how to work it, if that makes sense. So I think I'm kind of glitching like when I just massively swing across. I feel like I'm not using any skill, but I'm just trying. Yeah, it's that sort of, you don't, it's, yeah, it's really sort of inhibiting the sort of flow through it, because you're having to sort of, yeah, like on these ones where I just went, Whoa. Then anyway, So I do like the fact that they've um, put in sort of checkpoints at the start of each of these sections. So if you do, you know, frequently die in these, that's okay. It does keep that sort of momentum in that sense. So even if you die, you very quickly start again, unless it bugs out like this, and then you just immediately run into a dragon. Sort of like um, something like you know Hotline Miami or Super Meat Boy. Mm -hmm. like they're very punishing levels, but you get through them quite quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. So in terms of that, um, so in sorry. terms of goals, risks, rewards. So there aren't a huge amount of sort of branching paths. So this is a quite a good example of them. But again, there's not a lot of difference between these two sections, right? Mm -hmm. no. no. So the traps are relatively. S Mostly the same, and honestly, I, looking at this, I couldn't tell you off the, like which which of these is the easiest path. Um, I'd say the top path. Is I think the, the top path is the easiest, but this one you can, if you get a lucky swing, you go straight across. Oh, okay. So the goal is uh, so from my um, my, so where I'm sitting in the room. Yeah, the goal is at the bottom. So okay, so it's definitely a shorter route there. So yeah. Top. So interesting. Yeah, I think that bottom track probably quite clearly uh, emphasises what we were talking about earlier with it going against the race to the end feel. Because I don't see a way of getting past it, other than, say, you know, getting through in that extremely short amount of time Max was talking about. Other than just loitering in the middle, waiting for the... Yeah. Um, yeah, so... so... I'd say this is this is probably firmly a good. Yeah, possibly borderline excellent. What do you think? I'd, I'd be very reluctant to push it towards excellent because of how... It doesn't gel with the core, uh, core dynamic. Okay. Um, I'd even be tempted to say that uh, may maybe it's a borderline satisfactory gun just for that reason. Okay, but so Max, what are your thoughts on that? Um, is this for the gameplay? No, this is so it's level design. Level design. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, although, yeah, there's not an introduction to mechanics. It's kind of just it's kind of the same thing. Um, so I'd say it's. They off. Yeah, I'd say it's somewhere around here. Yeah, satisfactory and good. All right, so so somewhere borderline satisfactory. And good. <clears> okay, so. that seems fair enough. That just leaves uh, tutorial design. Tutorial design and feedback. Yep. So tutorial design. What did you think of the tutorial itself? Um, it was quite short. Sure. Let's go through it now so we can have a have another screen. So, so the contextual controls are quite nice. Um, hang on, what does what does W do? Is W? Um, that's a good question. Oh, jumps as well. Okay. You have the choice of space. Obviously. But it's odd that it then teaches you a separate jump control there. Yeah. So the Does visuals of these things are quite nice, but I feel that maybe they could be, you know, improved. like you were saying earlier, the radius of when they highlight could be. So, so the counterpoint to this would be WASD, right? What does S do? Not, um, well, you'd, you'd use that in the swing, I guess. Ah, that's true. So that WS. Might be good to have introduced that separately later, though. Yeah, so just having yeah. A and B like and yeah. space to jump. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, we we talked about how we really like the aesthetic of it, um, and I think they've done a, a decent job at actually forcing the player to get the hang of some of these two, uh, some of these mechanics before actually letting you progress. So by giving you, for example, that quite clear double jump situation where you can only get past it with double jump, albeit quite a hard one, I think. Um, 
Like maybe maybe just this first challenge was enough. But they, they've done a nice job of it regardless, I think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so if you looked at, uh, let's say, Satisfactory, that would be a partly integrated tutorial that communicates some goals, risk, rewards through level design and that introduces most information in the game. So I think it's probably a bit better now. Do they introduce the timer at any point? Uh, that's a good question. So if that's a key mechanic of the game, they don't specifically say, you know, this is how long you've got, you've got to get there mm. before the end. So it might have been nice to introduce that at a particular point. Perhaps even just turn it off at the start and then introduce that timer towards yeah. the end and say, look, you have 20 seconds to finish the level now. So that's an excellent point. It's something we said at the beginning and then just sort of forgot about. The fact that you're on the clock right from the start, when really with a grapple mechanic, and particularly if they wanted that really fast and sort of mm -hmm. free-flowing movement, not quite that fast and free-flowing, but sort of give you an area to practice in before they start the clock. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe, so okay, maybe it does tend towards sort of satisfactory. I, I think so actually with that because it does frustrate the tutorial experience. It would have been nice to introduce the pink beams a bit better because there's only one bit and you go over those quite. That's easily. a good point as oh, well. So, yeah, the first time you see them, they're sort of on a wall, which you're not likely to land if they've been sort of. If you have to jump over something. Yeah, exactly. If you have to jump over them, then it's sort of very clear that it's a hazard. So I think the first, first time I played this, I deliberately threw myself into them to see what happened. Okay, so um, last, last thing for this one, let's have a look at the feedback. So they've said that the main feedback they received was that the rope swing mechanic fed well into the race to finish core dynamic. Um, they want to be careful about not overcoming the game by adding too many mechanics, uh, as they thought it might detract from the core dynamic of the, player, uh, the game and distract the player. Um, so they, they, that means they only chose to add the double jump in addition to the grapple mechanic. Okay. Was there... So I, I'm still not sure why they why that justifies adding the double jump thing because I don't think that's the really. So I think so. We are reading through the feedback they've submitted. I think it's unclear exactly what feedback they received in the lab. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sp specifically in terms of sort of any changes they should make, it seems like a lot of the feedback they received was just on. Um, how well the mechanics integrated. Okay, and that's one of the other things is there is a there's a big difference between complexity through adding more mechanics and complexity through combining what mechanics you've got. I feel like this as an introductory bit to the right swing isn't the nicest bit to try and get up. Yeah, because you have to kind mm. of swing and let go, and it feels a bit clunky. Um. So yeah. So, in that case, looking at feedback, so a pass would be the feedback was not necessarily well articulated, but some changes have been made with limited success. I think that probably sounds fair. I think, yeah, given that they've not sort of explicitly said what the feedback was or why they acted on it in this way, it's probably mm -hmm. that. That's, uh, I, yeah, it's di the problem is it's difficult to say what success these changes had when we don't mm -hmm. know the problem that they're trying to solve with them. Yeah. So I think that's what we have to give it in this case. But overall, this has been uh, it's quite a nice game. Oh. It'd be nice to see some extra levels for it in the future. Yeah. Um, okay, let's uh, move on to our, our next game, and I think our last game, last game for this uh, for this batch of crossword. Okay, and our last game of this batch is Recoil. Uh, so this one we've had to open in Unity, so it might look a little bit different to uh, how we saw it in the expo. But we'll give it a go, and we'll see how it works. When it loads. Let's just wait for Unity to chat a little bit. There we go. So let's uh, head through the tutorial. <clears throat> okay, shoot the white square, target. Press mouse one to shoot, move mouse to aim. This is the only time you'll have to shoot the target. Okay, so that's... What? So I think... Okay. okay, so I suspect we'll find out why that is later. Because the actual goal of this game is to get to the white circle. Okay, that seems fair. But the reason they don't introduce that is because the only way to move is to shoot. Mm -hmm. So we have to fire so, so, backwards to... So I think perhaps the more interesting way to do that might have been just to basically put you in an empty room saying click to shoot, shooting will give you recoil, and then spawn in the uh, destination goal to the level and say, well now you have to get to here. Yeah, maybe. I, so I think that was a reasonable way to do it, because it means you, you're familiar with the shooting first, and then they introduce the second day of canvas. Okay. It's true. A little bit more. Um, it was just a very strange... I think I think it's because it, the phrasing on it made it a little bit unclear as to like yeah. what it was actually alluding towards. Um, I basically turn you up press escape. Awesome. So I gotta say, I quite like the idea for this game. So yeah, 
but it's actually kind of a neat, um, a neat idea. And yeah. So you end up having to sort of think about the order in which you're going to shoot things, so you don't, you know, push yourself into a pit or off a platform or something like that. So that first spike is quite nice, right next to the spawn point, forcing you to sort of go go up and over it. But also the fact that you know you have to get the hang of the basic mechanics where you can actually progress on this level is quite cool. Yeah, but it feels like this like this bit is going to be particularly challenging. So you've got to go up, shoot, and then oh oh god oh why is there a circle there? Yeah, so that feels mean. maybe like a sudden increase in difficulty. So I'm not sure how many levels they have in this. Uh, it was two, two, but they seem to. So I think generally up until sort of that point this level was fine and in fact to be honest even this narrow sort of jumping problem might be okay it's just that that extra red circle is maybe a little bit too far on the difficulty curve yeah but then again you know if it's only a prototype and it is often good to sort of show off your whole range of things as early as possible Absolutely. So, so here's the thing if they've got more stuff to show us after this then this is sort of too much of a challenge and it's going to sort of prevent us from seeing the interesting stuff if i shoot that i'm going to recoil back yeah that's the tricky thing right so you're going to have to sort of go up so you almost sort of want to pin yourself into that top right corner, I think. Yeah. And then you can sort of shoot down and then try and jettison yourself across. Uh, Alright, so let's um, crack on with uh, having a look at this in relation to the mark scheme. So in terms of presentation, what are we thinking? It's quite quite nice. It looks like one of those old school... It's quite... It's got, certainly got character. It's quite charming, actually. That's it, yeah. So, so I'm not sure about the green and purple in terms of, like, colour scheme, but... It's certainly striking. The red stuff stands out okay against mm -hmm. the purple. Way it's interesting. I quite oh, like the green and purple. That was the full game. Okay. So, okay. I think. Well, I think so. Oh, I see. So. Yeah. Okay. So they. So they sort of bump you back to the level, the menu between levels, which is a bit of an odd choice. Because so, in the tutorial, it told me to push escape to go back. Yeah. So I think you can quit now if you want with escape to go back. To the yeah. Menu. So that's fair enough, I guess. So it's a bit of an odd choice to yeah bump you back between levels. Anyway. So I don't know if there's any sound to this. I don't think there is. So maybe like. I don't know, a, a little noise every time you shoot something, or every time you destroy something. I suppose if it was every time you shoot, maybe that would get a little bit like after a while. Okay, don't try shooting up. Maybe, but at the same time, I think it, it, it would be nice to add a little bit more... I the word, satisfaction maybe, to the actual shots. Yeah. Um, just, a, just a little bit, maybe a little landing noise or something as well would be quite nice. So, well, in terms of like the information design, so spikes are spiky, the the destructible targets stand out from them. So so everything dangerous is red. Yep. I like that. Makes it extremely obvious. Although, am I, am I meant to shoot these, or am I meant to just I think, avoid I them? think you've got to shoot them. I don't know, you might be able to Because if I try and switch like that, you do go down. You only have to fire once though, right? So can you go like that? Maybe. We'll see. So that is a very... Having to make that switch feels quite difficult. I reckon... Come on. Right. I, I want to go. Switch over. Yeah. Alright, so we'll do a little shuffle around. Cal is now taking the driving seat. Let's see how he does. Um, Alright, so just in terms of straight up presentation, if we said uh, to look at what they need to get for good, key information is shown clearly, graphics are consistent, appropriate use of audio. So they don't have any audio, which I feel maybe sort of knocks them down a little bit from there. But otherwise, like you say, they've got that information design. Can you make it to that platform? Yes. So it's interesting that it ends on this sort of downward um, sort of drop. Because mm. that feels much easier than the previous one. Because you don't have to make that quick switch up and down. Yeah, that is true. Um, but otherwise, so somewhere between good and satisfactory, would you say? Or um, does it need a little bit more sort of clarity to some of the things? Uh, I would probably actually put it. Yeah, somewhere between. I want to say good, but actually the lack of audio, I think. So even hinders that. Even satisfactory is key information is shown, consistent graphics, and some audio. Yeah, so I think. So I think it might be. I think we might be being generous with satisfactory, borderline good. Yeah, I think I think I think if we put in satisfactory, so there is no audio, but everything else is clear and consistent enough that I think maybe it carries it to that. Yeah, yeah. So for this one, I just flew across the top. Oh, okay, so you didn't actually bother dropping them. Okay. Yeah, so how about the how about the gameplay? 
Uh, well, you're the one playing. Tell, tell I mean, me. Max was the one playing it first. Yeah, it seems quite nice. It seems quite smooth. You get the hang of it quite easily. Um, the tutorial, tutorial was quite basic. Um, but that was all we needed, really. So yeah, there is, I suppose, in terms of sort of what gameplay there is. Again, it's <clears throat> relatively simple. It's mm. just sort of movement combined with this sort of shooting. There's not a whole lot to tutorialize, but we'll get onto that when we talk about the tutorial. So the gameplay itself, there, there is sort of only one mechanic, but it's used in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose oh, you've got that's... the yeah you've got the just destroying these things the avoiding the what are you trying to do there are sorry the, there appears to be a minor bug I'll talk about it in a minute okay um, but if we look at um, say if we look at satisfactory again yeah? uh, a set of mechanics uh, usable controls meaningful play yeah yeah so certainly I like the way that the obstacle the two different types of obstacles combine with the sort of shooting mechanics. To emphasize that it's not just a platformer, it's actually a, uh, you know, to emphasize that sort of recoil and gun as a mechanic. Yeah, so I think to to push this up a level to good, what it would really need is, so the controls, so having to um, very quickly switch up and down with the mouse is probably a little bit too tricky, a little bit too much of um, an unusual control scheme, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, again, so a few more mechanics or some extensions of the mechanics they've got. So, for example, Obstacles that move, or something like that, yeah. just to add a little bit more mm. challenging complexity. Because yeah, there's not really a set of mechanics; it's just the, the red dots and the, the gun, really. So it, it's interesting you say that up and down is perhaps too challenging. I think I quite like it, but I think that's a maybe a level design issue rather than a. Well, the thing is, if you have your mouse at the bottom and you're clicking, you have to get the mouse above the character, which is quite. Oh, that that is true, actually. Yeah. So I think, but I think mm. otherwise that's fairly clear, satisfactory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so in terms of bugs, what were you what were you going to say about that? So, I'll show you that, Michelle. Go over here and show you. So, I think if you look at me clicking as fast as I can now, you'll find that the rate is not 100% consistent. I think it is. So, it is now, but wait. Okay, so you see the different gaps between the. There's a I, couple of gaps there. I noticed it when I was going over that, uh, that blob there because I was hovering nicely and going slowly, and then suddenly one of the gaps appeared and I dropped a bit and hit it. Uh, okay. So, you're bad and you're blaming on a bug. Wow. <laughs> um, so, so I. In terms of bugs, I think that is probably quite a minor one. I mean, frustrating, for sure. Mm. But, oh, uh, no. Yep. Damn it, recoil. So, so good would be there are only minor bugs and these are uncommon. I think given the complexity of the game, though, maybe that puts it borderline between satisfactory and good. There's not a huge range of mechanics that are going on, though. Yeah. So there's not much to bug out, really. Yeah, there's sort of the player movement and there's making sure the obstacles disappear. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. Also, it just, is it me or does this level look like a dinosaur? Is that done on purpose? Oh yeah, it kind of does. It's got like, little claws on the feet. There's yeah, it's got... There, it's got the eye. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Is this the tail? Yeah. I yeah. So. Alright, I want to see if the other level looks like anything now. But yeah, um, <laughs> maybe getting a little distracted. Uh, so satisfactory would be uh, some infrequent serious bugs and or frequent minor bugs. And so there's certainly not the serious bugs, but again, it's that sort of complexity thing. Do we think it's uh -huh. complex enough to have those bugs? I oh, see this one looks like a snake. I was going to say, generously it's a snake, isn't a it? snake or... I don't know, that kind of reminded me of a horse's head before you destroyed his eye. But, um, I don't see it. Snake I don't, don't see it either. Oh, you destroyed the eye. So. <laughs> oh, the eye was over there. Yeah, he... Alright, hang on. Really weird elephant. Uh, uh, <laughs> Should we get back on with the marking? Um, so, do you reckon satisfactory or borderline satisfactory? Good. Um, let's go with satisfactory. I think. Yeah. Okay. I I agree with that. I think if they'd have had a couple more mechanics, like I say, sort of moving moving obstacles or something like that, or just something to add just a little bit more depth to the mechanics they've already got. Mm. That would sort of push it over. But as it is, there's... It's, I think even um, the sort of bug you noticed is like extremely minor. I think it only comes up in some very precise situations. Yeah. So. Okay, in terms of the, uh, the brief we gave them, the level design, um, so do the levels have a sense of pacing? Is there a sense of risk and reward? Is there um, a clear sort of challenge curve and things like that? I mean... So there's only a couple of levels in here. There's sort of three, including the tutorial. Mm -hmm. 
but I guess the tutorial has sort of some sub-levels as part of it as well. So the pacing seems to be, I mean I've not played this um, watching you guys play it, it seems you know relatively sensible, it sort of ramps up relatively nicely. There was that sort of one point early on where there was that very sort of thin sort of gap you had to get through which looked a bit challenging. Yeah, yeah. And it was a bit confusing because it is one of the removal ones, but there wasn't really a good way to do that, I don't think. And then, yeah, sort of like <clears> I mentioned here, having the sort of the final bit be on a downward trajectory, I guess, mm, can be the easier than the other. Oh, yeah, let's go through that because we're about to talk about that in a second. So I think it introduces those mechanics quite nicely, sort of again, the level mm. design sort of makes sure you go up and then back down and then sort of up and around again. Yeah, I, th I think so as well, actually. Um, generally, I've found that the levels are testing slightly different things as well, which is quite nice. Mm. There's been, it looks quite similar, but in, the, in, in what you actually do, it's subtly different every time, and that, that is quite nice. So I don't think it, so it has some element of that whole risk reward strategy. So do you, like, sort of, which path do you choose? Do you take the longer, easier path or the shorter, harder path? It doesn't have that to a huge extent, but it looks like there are some places where you could decide to, you know, try and very quickly shoot those obstacles, or do you just try and navigate around them, which can lead to maybe a different style of play. Yeah. yeah. But mm. again, I'm not so so looking at it. It looks like it's got that. But I don't know how feasible those strategies actually are. And I do like how these tutorial levels. Like the first one was similar to the first level where you have to go up around the corner, and this was dropping down like the second yeah. level. So the ending is. Like, I quite like the fact it tutorialises how to leave as well. That's, um, yeah, quite nice actually. Alright, so uh, what we say, a sensible level design demonstrates some of the mechanics with an attempt at pacing and some dog rewards. I think it's probably better than that. Yeah. I guess it's one of these things where it demonstrates all of the mechanics, but maybe there aren't a huge amount of mechanics to display. I, I, I think it probably does successfully demonstrate the mechanics. I think it does have probably a relatively decent pacing as well. Yeah. Um, with some very minor exceptions. It's just that goals, risks, rewards, the goals are clearly communica uh, communicated clearly. It's whether there is that risk reward element in it. Yeah, so and, I think some just... here, so for example, this middle um this middle sort of passage here where your mouse was a moment ago. If there were if the gap between those two obstacles was slightly larger, it would sort of give you more of a choice of do you want to try and navigate between them or are you going to focus on like mm. that really quicky uh, tricky upward shot. Mm. There was this bit here where I was thinking whether to shoot up or try and go around like that. Oh, no, if you can go around. Yes. So, so Maybe if you're incredibly precise with it. And that's the thing. I think that's probably the only element of that risk reward dynamic in, mm. in this game. So I think that probably puts it between satisfactory and good. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's awesome. probably fair. Yeah. All right, so if we go back to the tutorial itself. Oh, all right. All right. So not literally, but just in terms of the discussion. But we can have a look at it as we talk about it. So firstly, it shows that you can shoot, and that's the core mechanic of this entire game. Fair enough. I still stand by that that initial... Uh, interesting. You can't actually quit out the tutorial until you reach the quitting part of the tutorial. Um, I do feel like they're perhaps still a little bit confusing on that opening screen. I do like the fact that it tutorializes at first, but I'm just, I can't but wonder if maybe there was a better way to do it. You'd kind of just wonder that. You'd kind of work that up yourself, really, wouldn't you? Yeah. A little bit. Right. I mean, it's interesting that they've thought about it. The fact that they've realised that this is something that isn't going to come for the rest of the game and they're explicitly telling you that means they have thought about maybe that will be a problem and that's the way they've tried to address it. True, though I don't think it actually becomes a, a relevant part of the game until here, when you're actually destroying the... So I, what, what I mean is... Right, but like I said, the, first, the, fir the only control you've got is shooting things, so they have mm -hmm. to make sure you can shoot something and in a particular direction as well, right? Mm. Right. Well, also, just hypothetically, if you shoot along the bottom right now, okay, so you do move. So I almost feel like if that had locked your movement so you couldn't move right away, mm -hmm. maybe but, that would have been better. So I'm actually wondering, I'm thinking maybe do it the other way around. I actually think they should probably introduce the shooting to move as one entity. So they say, you will shoot and recoil, and then just give you the space with maybe a goal up here to just throw yourself around in. Yeah, perhaps. Because... The actual shooting targets comes in during the destruction tutorial. And it does say that's the only time you need to shoot a target. Where yeah. You so need this to bit here, for example, could have just said hazards are red, hazards are destructible, shoot to destroy. Yeah. And then. So I, so I feel the the way they've done it is probably okay, but I can see okay. I can see why. Uh, yeah, I can see why you think doing the other I'd like to be clear so. that I am somewhat nitpicking here as yes. well. <laughs> um, so uh, tutorial wise. 
not the integrated tutorial, communicates some goal address rewards through level design, uh, introduces most information and mechanics in a logical way. So that would be the criteria for a satisfactory tutorial. Um, I mean, it certainly introduces everything in a very logical way. Mm -hmm. It definitely uses the level design, as we can clearly see here, to force the player to actually get uh, the hang of the tutorial. Maybe um, an extra an extra bit to allow the player to practice those skills. Maybe once it's introduced hazards and destructibles and spikes. Um, I suppose well, this is. I was going to say, you don't necessarily. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of it. And then yeah. you sort of move into practicing it as you play the rest of the level. So that's not terrible. Again, it's one of these things where there aren't a huge amount of mechanics to be tutorialized, but the ones that are there, it does quite well, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. So. Yeah, I, I, the question is, is it is it satisfactory or is it good? I'd say it's perhaps a borderline. Okay, yeah. What do you think, Max? I wouldn't say it's mostly integrated with the, with the game, because... Well, I mean, so in the sense that it's a separate... It's a separate sort of um, level, if you like. But if they'd name that level 1, level 2, level 3, instead mm. of tutorial level 1, level 2, would you say it was integrated then? Um, probably. Yeah. And so you probably don't need as much text. Um, I, feel. I think it's intuitive enough as it is. Perhaps. I, so I think the, the text they've got there is fine. So it, it gives you an instruction, it lets you do it, and then it moves on to the next bit. Alright, okay. so let's, let's call that all the satisfactory good, and then we'll have a look at uh, what they said the core dynamic was. So the core dynamic they said was spatial reasoning. Uh, during the game, you have to consider your surrounding tiles and the possible consequences before making your move. So you could destroy one of the red obstacles, but doing so may throw you into a spike. Mm -hmm. So to me, yeah, that's like a really clear explanation of it. This could very easily have got sort of muddied with a destruction mechanic if you thought you had to you know, sort of destroy all of those things like, as quickly as possible or something like that. But the fact that it's all about sort of considering your position before you shoot. Yeah, because there is a point where you need to align yourself. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like So uh, let's have a look at the mark scheme again. So, uh, so a good would be a clear core dynamic, suits the theme of the game, and is well supported by the primary mechanics and mostly appropriate audio visual choices. I think it, that, apart from the audio, I think I think it pretty clearly mm. hits like hits that. It's um, it's certainly like an interesting mechanic for sort of moving around, and they make the most of it with sort of the level design, sort of how they've laid out some of these puzzles to sort of make you consider how you're moving. Ah, you can get there. Good job. So, yeah, if it had a little bit more audio, something to sort of really emphasize, I guess, the player movement rather than you know, the destruction of certain objects, that would really enhance that core dynamic a little bit more. But mm -hmm. as it is, I think it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So are we going for the good one then? Yeah, yeah let's go for the good one. Cool. All right, and in terms of feedback, so the feedback they received, um, so I think I remember talking to them in the last three So uh, they say, we had several ideas for mechanics that would support our main mechanic, but we didn't have a clear core dynamic. So the feedback was to essentially decide on one of the core dynamics, uh, and it, as it had changed the direction of the game. Um, if they had gone with their initial plans, the game may have ended up as a survival style game with resource management and ammo counters and things like that. Instead, we decided to focus on the challenging nature of the mechanic and change our level design to accommodate the change. It's interesting how many games we've had this year as well that have been pivoting from one particular idea to something actually very radically different. Yeah, and, and also a lot of the feedback has been a case of like groups, when they start off, haven't really had a clear idea of what core dynamic they've gone mm. for, so they've had to sort of narrow it down. And I think in this case, um, certainly like removing the need for an ammo system. Very smart choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so they've sort of articulated what the feedback was. The thing is it was... So at the stage that we gave them this feedback, they they weren't really sure what their idea was going to be. So it's very difficult to sort of discuss sort of mm -hmm. some of the minute details. So while they've while they've managed to um, sort of make some of those changes to emphasise the core dynamic, there hasn't been a lot else they could have done with it. Mm -hmm. So I think um, so I think that you know they've made a good attempt at sort of addressing this feedback. But if they'd been a, if they'd had a clear idea of what they were going to do. At the feedback stage, yep. then we could have, then they would have been able to make more changes that sort of supported it in that way. Absolutely. So I would say perhaps somewhere between satisfactory and good for this, or or even version of good. What do you think? 
I think I think I think perhaps satisfactory just based on the fact that you know, like you say, they have had feedback on a previous iteration of this game. But I think um, they could have done with even feedback from playtesters, for example, that they could have then incorporated into the game rather than just us. I think they could have maybe a little bit of that further down the road. Okay. All right, and with that, I think that is uh, our last game of this video, uh, and the last game of uh, this batch of courseworks. So thank you very much for watching these videos. Uh, later on, we will be back with the next set of coursework videos. And until then, goodbye.